So we've had all of the birds since they were babies or gotten them very young, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, um, but that bird, our fifth, was a recent addition. Um, okay. She belongs to an elderly couple that we know and they both got ill. So what we're trying to do is get her to get better habits and she would eat nothing but nuts and I mean junk food. I mean turkey, chicken, ham, bacon, you name it, she ate it. And, and matter of fact, I had a pretzel in my hand and I never thought about it. She was on my shoulder and I just picked up a piece of a pretzel and without thinking, she reached around and snatched it right out of my mouth and grabbed it from me and wouldn't give it back to me. I mean, she would not give it back to me. She's pretty strong. So we've had to change her diet and we finally got her off of that crap and onto pellets. Okay. We were hands full. Let's see what we, let's yeah. see what let's these go guys meet the like. flock. So if every time you gave a treat you said good boy, now that term is going to associate with he did something right. So be careful because you might say, well, he's freaking out in the cage. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're telling him you're doing it right. You're doing it right. You're doing it right. A lot of people try to use it as like a calming effect when the bird's just anxious and totally stressed out. And that's the wrong time to use it. Okay. Will he take a treat for from somebody else? Mm, yeah. Skittish. Really quick too, you might have to click prior to the, just click and then give a treat. Yeah, he wasn't really interested in that. I, yeah, I was wondering if the stick was going to scare him away, because they, not all of them, but he seems especially like he's... Skittish. Yeah, he's, he's super nervous. Okay, buddy. You're super nervous. Hey! Yeah. Is there a different item that he wouldn't be afraid of that you think we can target him to? There's Maybe like put something on the end of it? He, he may, I mean, he may not be afraid of it. Just I can tell he is from this distance. Yeah, he's, he's very afraid. So while everybody is looking for an alternative target to use, I decide to try luring, but it backfires because this bird is fearful of abrupt noises, which happens more than once, and one of those noises happens to be the clicker, which actually terrifies him. For those of you wondering, I'm using a pine nut to do some of the luring, and here I wish I would have just handed him the nut and then either tried another repetition or just stopped completely um, because he earned it and he never got it because he was so scared. So that's something that in hindsight watching the video I definitely wish I would have done. And then in the video it takes me a little bit longer but then I realize he never actually consumed a treat so I go back trying to give him or deliver that treat but the opportunity is gone. He's no longer interested, he's overly terrified of the situation and doesn't even, not even interested in just taking a treat for free. He's so scared that like nothing's really valuable. This isn't a foreign object to him, but I don't know if this is going to help at all, but okay. I don't know what else. Yeah, we can see it. He'll touch it. Okay. Use that. So what's up with him fluffing his feather like that? He's well, that was better. That was a little bit more content. But what's the matter, buddy? What's the matter? What's the matter? Are you nervous? You can definitely see if you want to offer it and see if he'll touch the end. Yep. Nope. It's a big feather. So I would love to know what did you see in that interaction and what did you learn? Because although that interaction wasn't great for the bird, obviously he was scared by the perch coming in there. Um, it gave us a glimpse at who this bird prefers in that interaction. So who was it? I'm going to play that clip again, a little bit shorter of a version and see if you guys can pick up on who this bird prefers. So what's up with him fluffing his feather like that? He's well, that was better. That was a little bit more content. But what's the matter, buddy? What's the matter? What's the matter? Are you nervous? You can definitely see if you want to offer it and see if he'll touch the end. Yep. Nope. Good day, Bubba. No. No, 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 no. It's all right. No, he's not happy. I know. It's all right. Can you give him a treat? Sure. No. Well, let him step up onto you. Yeah. How's that? Just stick and you're clicking and he gets a treat. Okay, if you can tell him that a little bit. And so, no, 
Well, in case any of us needed confirmation that Scott is the bird's favorite person, uh, Scott was saying no to the bird because it was about to escalate to regurgitation. Um, so obviously that little head bob and dance was where that was going, but there we got our confirmation that Scott's our guy. So you're gonna slowly approach with the stick and we're trying to get him to touch the stick. Now with the stick, go ahead and slowly approach, see if he wants to touch it. Slowly, slowly, slowly raise the stick. And... You're gonna hear a click. The click should have come right at this exact moment, but we miss it because then we have to explain exactly what we're doing and looking forward to Scott. And we miss that opportunity completely and have to wait for it to present itself all over again. You're going to hear a click in a second. When that happens, I want you to lower the stick and hand him a treat. Okay. So, you know, so we're looking for signs of calm or disinterest. Okay, so lower the stick, hand him one treat. One treat. Good. Good. And then step out of the bubble. You don't have to go that far, it's just like here. We're giving him a space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want space, I give him space. <laughs> yeah, I can take a hand. So go ahead and take one big step forward towards him. Okay. Slowly raise the stick. Slowly, 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 slowly. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going to about head level. And stop there. Stay where you are. Go ahead and lower the stick. Done eating, I'm going to have you slowly raise it to that same spot. And you guys are going to have a lot of questions about why we're doing this, and we'll answer that after the session. Yeah, so we'll go a little bit closer with the stick. A little bit closer. Keep going, keep going. Okay. Keep going a little bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Cool, so stay where you are. Go ahead and lower the stick. Lower the stick. We're waiting for his repetition, so just drop it by your side. Let him eat that treat first that before we start again. So you just want to calm back down. Yep. Relax. So what we're trying to get to do is understand to barely touch the stick. We don't necessarily want his lower mandible to be able to crunch down. Like there, he just touched with the top of his upper mandible. Totally fine. We just want him to learn to touch it, not necessarily bite it. So go ahead and do the same thing, slowly raising the stick, go ahead and get a little bit closer to him. A little closer and pause there. Set by lowering the stick down all the way. He lost his chance on that one. So we're going to let him think about it for a second. He's like, wait a sec, how come I didn't get a treat? And as you see him thinking, mm -hmm. so failure is critical for these guys. They're smart enough to actually learn more from failing than only succeeding. All right, so we're going to slowly raise the stick again to where he last had it. And go in slightly more. That's excellent. Ooh, nice job. All right. Could you guys see an improvement there? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we are using that hormonal bond that he has with you to get this, but you can see it completely distracted him and he is not anywhere near going to show you regurgitation in this setting because you've now turned it into a training session. So that's a really good way to get out of hormonal behavior okay. is to completely distract them into something else. So let's maybe do two or three more repetitions. I'm going to have you walk back in. These try to do the exact same thing. Slowly raising it. Pause there. Go slightly closer. And pause. Okay. And yeah, you can stay in this bubble because we're still up. Yep. Awesome. That didn't so take long to get him over here. I, mean, I don't want yeah. to give him any negative reinforcement, but he's just interested. Go ahead and raise the stick. Keep that question and we'll answer it after this here. Go a little closer. Wow. And 
The next one's the last one. I'll get you some. There you go. Okay, so, so stand by. So yeah, talking to them is okay, except right now we don't really want to add anything that might add fear. So that's why we're all kind of, you feel the energy of the room right now is calm. That's what we need for this particular bird. All right, go ahead and raise it. Right there, hold it there. It's gonna probably move a little bit. Excellent. Cool. Uh, just one. And yeah. step back. So that's an awesome session. We ended up where we wanted. One of the hardest things with targeting is you saw how the, the, the progress really moved forward, mm -hmm. but when you get him to move a little bit, that means he's starting to understand it. And that last repetition, and what I mean by move a little bit, he moved his feet. Hold it over the metal upright. We'll lower this hand so he knows there's two there. reason I had to bring it closer is he, we lost his attention. He was like, oh, hey, good looking. <laughs> but we wanted to, you, did you see how it turned from training to hormones? We want to bring it back to training. Gotcha. So by having you move the stick slightly closer, he was like, oh yeah, this. Okay. So we're right on, the, right on the balance between hormones and training. And so we're using that to our advantage. But again, you want to discourage those hormones from starting to rise. And that can be done through training.